Hello friends, welcome to this practical course on heaters. In this lecture, we are going to perform analysis for our structure and interpret the results. Before analyzing the structure, let's add a window for elevation view. So click on this window list and then click on add new window option. So here you can see that a new window for elevation has been added. Now let's run the analysis. To do so, click on this run analysis option. Alternatively, you can press F5 key from the keyboard to run the analysis. It will take few seconds to run the analysis. Now let's interpret the results after the analysis. First of all, we are going to see the deformed shape for various load cases. So activate 3D view and then click on this show deformed shape option. Alternate, alternatively to see the deformed shape, you can also press F6 key from the keyboard. You can see the deformed shape for all the basic load cases that you have defined as well as all the load combinations. So let's see the deformed shape for dead load. So select dead load from the list and click on apply. So in 3D view you can see that when the dead load is applied the structure is getting deformed in the downward direction. So from this we can interpret that our results are coming correct. If the structure would have deformed weirdly then we could have concluded that the results are not correct. You can see the deformed shape for dead load in the elevation view as well. So activate elevation view by clicking on it and then again click on apply. So here also you can see that the structure is getting deflected in the downward direction. You can also see the deflected shape or the deformed shape for the live load as well. So select live load from the list and again click on apply. So again you can see that the structure is getting deflected in the downward direction. Now let's see the deformed shape for the lateral loads that is earthquake and the wind loads. So this time I will be selecting elevation view 5 in order to see the deflected shape for wind in x and earthquake in x direction. So activate elevation view 5 from the list. Now select wind x plus from the list and click on apply. So here you can see that when the wind load is applied in the x direction the structure is getting deflected in the x direction. So this means that the wind load that you have applied is correct. Now let's check wind load earthquake load in the x direction. So EQ select EQ x plus and again click on apply. So again you can see that the structure is getting deflected in the x direction. You can hover on these nodes and it will show the deflection value. As you can see that the maximum deflection in x direction is 10.81 mm for EQX plus. Now let's see the deformed shape for wind in y direction and earthquake in y direction. For that select elevation grid A from the list. Now select wind y from the list and click on apply. So here you can see that when the wind is applied in positive y direction the structure is getting deflected in that direction. So that means that wind in y direction applied is correct. Let's see the earthquake in y direction as well. Again you can see that after applying earthquake in positive y direction the structure is getting deformed 
in the positive y direction so this means that all the loads that we have applied are giving the correct deformed shape now i want to see what is the maximum deflection under wind and earthquake load because i need to also perform the deflection limit check to do so you can go to display and then click on story response plots now let's see the story response plot for wind in x plus direction so here you can see that the maximum deflection under wind in x plus direction is 22.53 mm as you can see from the bottom of this graph you can also hover at this point to see the value of maximum deflection now as per is code the maximum limit for the deflection is 0.004 times the total height of structure above ground level so if you see the total height above ground level for our building is 2.75 meter plus 3.35 times of 7 because we have seven floors above the ground floor so 3.35 times of 7 and plus one additional floor that is for the lift cabin and the staircase cabin so it will be 2.75 plus 3.35 times of 8 and we are considering height only above ground level so 1.5 will be not included in this total height so this will come out to be 29.55 meters so we can say that maximum allowed deflection as per is code is 0.004 times the total height above ground level and we are converting this 29.55 meter into mm so i am multiplying it by 1000 so this value comes out to be 118.2 mm so let's see whether the deflection for our structure is below this value or not so as you can see for wind in x plus direction the maximum deflection is 22.5 mm which is well under control similarly let's check maximum deflection for wind in y direction so it is 19.54 mm so again this is under control similarly check maximum deflection for eqx plus so it is 14.86 again it is under control and for eqy plus it is 13.66 so again it is under control so our structure is passing the deflection limit check now let's see shear force and bending moment diagram for this structure to do so you can click on this display frame slash pier slash spindle link forces option or alternatively you can press f8 key from the keyboard so click on this now you can see the shear force and bending moment diagrams for all the basic load cases as well as load combinations so let's see the bending moment diagram for dead load so first of all let's understand what are these moment 3322 shear 22 and shear 33 values so in e tabs this longitudinal axis of any member is called as the 11 axis so for this simply supported beam this axis is the longitudinal axis similarly if i cut the cross section of this rectangular beam then the major axis of this beam is called as 33 axis as per eters and the minor axis is called as the 22 axis for eters so the moment about this 33 axis will be moment m33 or the major axis moment similarly the moment about the minor axis is called as the m22 moment as per eters and similarly we will have shear force about the major and minor axis so let's say i am interested to see the major axis bending moment m33 
so select movement 3 3 the scaling is set to automatic and here I want to display field diagram as well as show values at the controlling stations click on apply so here you can see the bending movement so as you can see the bending movement that you have seen for the continuous beam so at the continuous support you have negative bending movement or the hogging bending movement so by looking at this bending movement you can say that at this continuous support you need to have a tension reinforcement that is reinforcement at the top of the beam now let's see the shear 3 3 value so it will look something like this and similarly you can see the remaining values as well that is axial force as well as the torsion so guys this is how you will analyze the structure and interpret the results in ETABS so that's all for this video if you like this content please do subscribe to my channel and also share it with your friends thanks for watching bye for now